My customer wanted to take her old mink coat and turn it into a mink throw as well as a mink pillow. Here we go and enjoy the process. First thing is you need to inspect the coat and then you're going to take away the lining from the coat. I'm using a very sharp X-Acto knife and I'm going to be going around starting at the bottom and then I'm going to move all the way around the coat. Right now I'm just removing the uh, tacking string. I'm going to be frequently vacuuming because when the coats go to the cleaner they clean the coats with sawdust and you can't imagine how much sawdust is in this coat. So anyway I'm working my way around to the sleeve and I'm removing the lining from the sleeve. I'm going to save the lining in case I'll use it with the matching pillow. Back at the bottom of the quilt again, now I'm removing the bottom lining as well as some of the batting that they used when constructing the jacket. Again, see all that sawdust? There's a lot of dust, which means the vacuum is out quite a bit. Aside from the dust, also all the loose fur that is coming off this coat. You can see all the loose threads. Sometimes you'll see them flying around. Uh, not the loose threads, the uh, loose fur. The bottom of this jacket is not in the best shape. There is a lot of loose debris as well as fur that is continually coming off. Now I'm taking off the uh, lapel area. I'm removing any loose strings as well as the batting that goes across the jacket. So it goes up into the neckline and goes back down to both sides of the lapel. There's lots of buttons. I'm going to save those. I'm going to remove them and I'm going to return them to the customer. But wherever there is a button that's coming off or any kind of fastener, there's going to be a hole uh, that's going to be left over and you have to be aware of that because you're going to need to close those holes later on if you use that part of the pelt. Here I am, I'm removing the uh, pocket areas for both the right and left side of the coat. Careful not to damage the fur as we're moving around. It's important to keep in mind that when working with fur, there are going to be damaged parts of the fur. So you are going to have to cut those damaged pieces out and sew them together. I'm now going to take the scissors and I'm going to cut across the worst part of the coat. That's the bottom of the coat. I'm not going to be able to use that part of the fur at all. So that's going to be discarded. Now I'm just picking off loose strings.
I keep the vacuum on when I'm doing this so this way I just pull it off the coat and then directly into the vacuum so this way there's no flyaway as well. All right, here I am, I'm removing some fasteners. As you can see, I'm going to be using my X-Acto knife, carefully removing it from the fur. I'm gonna save those and I'm gonna return it to the customer. And I am going to put a little plastic clip on those areas that need to be mended. The area that I'm removing here is partly fur and partly lining. I'm going to remove that so it's just fur and remove all the lining as well. All the little clips that you see inside the coat are areas that have to be mended. Again, I'm removing lining that's on the cuff. Careful not to damage the fur, because I'm gonna be using that later on, either in the pillow or the uh, throw. This is the sleeve area, so now I'm removing the sleeve from the coat. It is a time-consuming process. Here's the sleeve. I switched X-Acto knives because my blade got really uh, dull. Sleeve number one is off, and then we're gonna continue to sleeve number two. Here's the second sleeve. going right down the center of the sleeve. Lots of fur. <laughs> Gathering up any loose pieces of fur as well as flyaways. And now I'm going to get ready to work on the collar area as well as going down the lapel. When working with fur, it's there's no way that you're going to avoid hair everywhere. Uh, but this particular coat just had a lot of flyaway. That's why I'm wearing the mask through most of it because my eyes and throat were itching from the fur that was all over the all over my workspace. Again, I'm going down the side of the lapel and I'm moving the little clips that I had put on earlier uh, when I removed the fasteners. Although it looks like I might cut through to the fur below, I'm not. I'm being very, very careful to only cut the pelt. Here I am now cutting through the top of the sleeve. And now the whole coat is deconstructed. I'm putting on a layer of just a light spray of water and I'm using a paper towel and I'm just gently 
picking up loose hairs as well as dirt. There was some dirt as well as lots of loose hairs. Then I take the animal fur comb and I go across the fur and again trying to pick up as much of the fur or the loose fur as I can. I did this for not only the collar area but for the complete coat. By the time I got to constructing it and putting it together, I didn't need the uh, mask as much. Now I'm working on the armhole area. I'm going to straighten it out, make my straight cuts. I'm using a very sharp knife here. I want my uh, area to be very, very straight and clean. Now I'm getting ready to attach some of the pieces and this used to be the armhole and this was the sleeve. So what I've done is I have cut out the appropriate size for the patch and I'm going to line it up and I'm going to make sure that the pelt is going in the same direction. I don't want to put it in opposite because that's going to be a mistake. It's not going to look good. So you line up the pelt. Make sure that everything is going in the appropriate direction. It's all going down. And I'm going to fold it over. And I have already put down my cold tape for the edging on all sides and I just need to add another little piece here and I'll be able to continue and match up the corners and sew my seam. My cold tape is a double sided cold tape and I'm going to be using ribbon as part of the stabilizer so I'm going to pull a piece off and I'm going to put it on the length of the fur but I'm not going to touch the fur. Cut that. Put it on the opposite end. Lay it so it's on the actual skin. to add it to this piece as well. Again, trying to avoid any fur. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to gently peel off my tape. I'm going to grab my ribbon. And I'm going to lay it down. Make my little snip here, being careful not to come in contact with the skin. This will help support it when I go to sew it together. Now I'm going to be able to match up these sides together. I'm going to 
going to put right sides together. I'm going to start with the center. I'm going to tuck the fur down. And I'm going to add a clip right here. Tuck my fur down. Add a clip. Actually, using an old discarded dental tool. That I usually use when I do my embroidery. and I'm going to sew the seam and then I will then continue with the side pieces. I picked a stitch that was appropriate for this type of sewing and I am carefully taking my tools and I'm pushing the fur under the needle area so all the fur gets tucked in as I sew. The first armhole is complete. I'm just going over the fur with the brush and I smooth it out. It looks very, very nice. And when I turn it over, there's the patched part. Continue this way while adding all parts of the quilt. There's the patch or one of the patches. This is when I had it laid out on the board. My backing I made myself. I took black satin and I layered it with a cotton batting and I brought it down to my long arm machine. I picked a pattern that I thought would be appropriate for the backing and then I layered that backing on top of the fur. I sewed both sides and the top together, leaving the opening on the bottom. So this way I could turn it and then hand sew the bottom. Here is the completed throw and the back side of the throw with a matching pillow, of course. I use the lining from the jacket to create the back of the pillow. I used an iron-on interfacing to stabilize the back of the pillow, added a zipper for easy removal and cleaning of the pillow itself. Hope you enjoyed the process. See you soon.